Okay, guys, so what is the value of c that makes the trinomial a perfect square? To do a perfect square, you need to cut the b value in half and then square it. So the b value is 16. 16 divided by 2, that is 8. And 8 squared is 64. So this answer is 64. Negative 8 divided by 2. That's negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. 6 divided by 2, that's 3. And 3 squared is 9. Negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. Negative 7 squared is 49. These numbers will always come out positive because you're squaring them. Um, this would be a 5 divided by 2 squared. And you could get a decimal answer, um, but I like fractions. 5 squared is 25, and 2 squared is 4. So 25 over 4 would be our answer. And this would be negative 24 divided by 2 is negative 12. Negative 12 squared is 144. So those are your answers to the first six. 7 through 10 says solve by completing the square. Express your answers in simplified radical form. So completing the square is that same thing that we just did. Cut b in half and square it. So over here, I write a squared plus 12a plus blank minus blank plus 32 equals 0. Okay. We do a plus and a minus blank because when we put the same number in here, they cancel out to be 0. So it's going to help us kind of alter the form that we want. So 12 divided by 2, that's equal to 6. And 6 squared is 36. So this needs to be a positive 36, a negative 36 that we're putting into the blanks. Okay. The first three terms are going to factor. And the shortcut is you just look at that number right there, 6. That's what goes in the root, or in the parentheses. So this is a plus 6 squared. And negative 36 plus 32 is a negative 4 equals 0. The opposite of minus 4 is add 4 to both sides. So we get a plus 6 squared equals 4. And this is our PEMDAS backwards root. Okay. If there was a number in front of parentheses, we would divide by it. But since there isn't, we don't have to worry. We're going to root both sides. And you get two answers. a plus 6 is equal to positive 2 a plus 6 is equal to negative 2, because the square root of a 4 is both positive and negative. Subtract 6 from both sides to get a equals negative 4. Subtract 6 from both sides to get a equals negative 8. There you go. Um, 8. Number 8, you would do the same kind of problem. Uh, this is x squared minus 14x plus blank minus blank plus 44 equals 0. I'm going to zoom in because my handwriting is going to get a little small now. Um, so to fill in the blank, I need to do negative 14 divided by 2 and square it. That's negative 7 squared, which is 49. So 49 goes into both of the blanks. First three are going to factor into an x minus 7 squared. Again, you get that number from right there. That number tells you what goes in the parentheses. And negative 49 plus 44 is a negative 5 equals 0. Now this is in vertex form. We're going to solve with PEMDAS backwards. So the opposite of minus 5 is plus 5 to both sides. So x minus 7 squared is equal to positive 5. Square root both sides, because we don't have to divide. So x minus 7 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. 
Whenever you take the square root, you get two answers, positive and negative. And to get x by itself, we add 7 to both sides. So x is equal to 7 plus or minus the square root of 5. Those are two answers. Moving on to number 9. In the very beginning, notice that they all have a common factor. I can factor that out. So this is 2 times n squared minus 6n plus 4 plus 12, sorry, is equal to 0. And this says 2 times all this stuff equals 0. So if I just divide both sides by 2, the 2's cancel. I get n squared minus 6n plus blank minus blank plus 12 equals. And 0 divided by 2 is just 0. So to fill in the blank, I need to do negative b over, sorry, b divided by 2 squared again. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9, so both of those are 9s. The first 3 become an n minus 3 squared. Again, you're getting that number from right there. And negative 9 plus 12 is a positive 3 equals 0. So now I need to solve using PEMDAS backwards. The opposite of plus 3 is minus 3. So I get n minus 3 squared is equal to negative 3. I get rid of the squared by square rooting both sides. And so I'm going to get n minus 3 is equal to plus or minus. Since there's a negative under the root, you pull i out in front. i root 3. And the opposite of minus 3 is plus 3. I add 3 to both sides. So you get 3 plus or minus i root 3 as my final answer. Uh, for number 10, again, we're going to solve by completing the square. So 4 is going to factor out in front. That's p squared minus 2p minus 15 is equal to 0. And again, if I divide both sides by 4, 4 divided by 4 reduces. 0 divided by 4 is 0. So I just get p squared minus 2p plus blank minus blank minus 15 is equal to 0. To figure out what goes in the blank, I do negative, sorry, not negative, um, actually negative 2 divided by 2 squared. That's negative 1 squared, which is a positive 1. So that's a 1, 1. The first three are going to simplify to be a p minus 1 squared. Negative 1 minus 15 is negative 16 equals 0. We now need to solve by doing PEMDAS backwards. So we add 16 to both sides. So p minus 1 squared is equal to positive 16. Then we square root both sides. And we get p minus 1 is equal to the square root of 16 is both a positive 4 and a negative 4. Okay, The only reason I don't write them as two separate answers for this problem beneath or above me, this one right here, is because I can't take the square root of 5. It's just not possible. I can, however, take the square root of 16. Okay. And that's why I split them up into two answers. When you have a perfect square root that you can take the square root of, split it up into two separate problems. We add 1 to both sides to get p equals 5. Add 1 to both sides to get p equals negative 3. And those are our two solutions. 11. Solve using the quadratic formula. There's a big problem here. This is not equal to 0. This is equal to 15. So we subtract 15 from both sides. And 21 minus 15 is 6. That should be a positive 6. Okay. And the quadratic formula, which you guys have to have memorized, is x equals negative b. So negative times negative 9. 
plus or minus the square root of negative 9 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is now a 6, all over 2a, so 2 times a, which is 1. Okay? You have to have the quadratic formula memorized. Okay? x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So a negative times a negative is a positive 9 plus or minus the square root. Negative 9 times negative 9 is positive 81. Uh, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. All over 2 times 1, which is 2. So our final answer comes out to 9 plus or minus the square root of 81 minus 24 is 57, all divided by 2. That is our final answer. We cannot simplify it anymore. 57 cannot be simplified uh, anymore. That's 19 times 3. 19 and 3 are both prime. Okay, on to the next one. x equals negative b, which is a negative 20. Plus or minus the square root of negative 20 squared minus 4 times 1 times 91 all over 2 times a, which is 1. So this is 20 plus or minus the square root of negative 20 squared is 400. Negative 4 times 1. Oh, man. Uh, how do I want to do this? Uh, 91 times 4. Uh, that's three, 364. So minus 364 all over 2 times 1 is 2. So this is 20 plus or minus the square root. 400 minus 364 is 36 all over 2. And we can simplify 36. So this will be 20 plus 6 divided by 2 and 20 minus 6 divided by 2. Okay, So I'm splitting this up into two separate answers. There's a plus minus. The square root of 36 is positive 6, negative 6. So this becomes 26 divided by 2, which is 13. This becomes 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So our two answers are x equals 13 and 7. Those are both my answers. 13 minutes down, I just got through the first page. It's not looking good. Solve by the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, so that's negative 10, plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3 all over 2 times 2. Simplify that a little bit. That's negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared is 100. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24 all over 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so I'm going to do a little side work right now. 100 plus 24 is 124. And I know that I can split that up. That breaks out into a 2 and a 62. And 62 breaks up into 2 and 31. So the square root of 124 is 2 root 31. So this is negative 10 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 31 all divided by 4. You think we would be done. However, negative 10 and 2 and 4, they all have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to divide 10 by 2 and 2 by 2 and 4 by 2 to make this 
negative 5 plus or minus I still think it's recording I hope it is okay plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1 so that's root 31 all over 4 divided by 2 is 2 that's our final answer answers there are two answers there okay. 14 is not ready to go yet we need to push everything over to one side so I'm going to subtract 6x and add 14 to both sides. So this is now x squared minus 6x plus 14 equals 0. And we're ready for the quadratic formula. x equals negative b, b is negative 6, plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times a is 1 times c is 14 all over 2a, 2 times 1. In case you guys are wondering where the 1 is coming from, a is the value that's in front of x squared, and since there is no number in front, we know it's an invisible 1. Okay, So I'm going to move up here for the rest of the problem. Negative times negative is positive 6, plus or minus the square root uh, 6 squared is 36, so 36 and 4 times 14 is 56 all over 2 times 1 is 2 so this is 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 20 all over 2 we're not done yet we can keep simplifying 20 can be broken down I'm going to do a little scratch work over here so the square root of 20 is breaking down into 4 and 5 and 2 and 2. So this is 6 plus or minus. Since there is a 2, a pair of 2's, we pull 2 out in front. Since it's negative under the root, there needs to be an i. Square root of 5 was left over. 5 goes back under the root all over 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that's i root 5. Those are our two solutions. They are both imaginary. 3 plus i root 5, 3 minus i root 5. Fifteen through 18, it says solve using any method. So I need to subtract 3x from both sides first. So this is now x squared minus 3x minus 1 is equal to 0. Quadratic formula is the only way to go here, brothers and sisters. We have x equals a negative times a negative is positive 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2 times a, which is 1. So 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. 9 plus 4 is 13, all over 2. Those are our answers for number 15. Number 16. Notice how this is a perfect square number. You can factor this, um, and this would factor into an x plus 11, x minus 11 equals 0. That means you would split up into x plus 11 equals 0 and x minus 11 equals 0. Subtract 11 from both sides to get x equals negative 11. Add 11 to both sides to get x equals positive 11. So those are our two answers. The other way you can do this is to do PEMDAS backwards. Add 121 to both sides. So x squared equals 121, square root both sides, and you get x is equal to plus or minus 11. Either one of these is an acceptable form of the answer. 17, it is not equal to 0. It needs to be equal to 0, so we add 6 to both sides, and we get b squared plus 8b 
minus 33 is equal to 0, and that factors using a double bubble. The front two must multiply to be b squared, so that's b and b. The last two need to multiply to be negative 33, so that's going to be an 11 and a 3. 11 times b is 11b. 3 times b is 3b. And to make it equal to positive 8, that must be a negative 3 and a positive 11. So positive 11, negative 3 equals 0. So it's factored. We split it up into two equations, b plus 11 equals 0, b minus 3 equals 0. Subtract 11 from both sides, and b equals negative 11. Add 3 to both sides and get b equals 3. Over here, factor using the GCF. I need to pull A out. Actually, they both share 3 in common, so 3A comes out. Okay, 3 and 15 are both divisible by 3. A squared and A are both divisible by A. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. A squared divided by A is A. Minus, minus. 15 divided by 3 is 5. There was an A, we took it out. So there it is in factored form. 3a is equal to 0. a minus 5 is equal to 0. Divide both sides by 3 to get a equals 0. Add 5 to both sides to get a is equal to 5. Our answers are 0 and 5. If you were to use quadratic formula for this, your a value would be 3, your b value would be negative 15, and your c value would be 0. So be careful with that. Uh, simplify. First thing we need to do is distribute this 3 into the inside. So that's 7 plus 3i plus 15 minus 27i. 7 plus 15 is 22. 3i minus 27i is negative 24i. Done. For this one, uh, distribute the negative 2. Distribute the 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 8i is 32i. Negative 2 times 12 is negative 24. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6i. 8 minus 24 is negative 16. 32 plus 6 is a positive 38i. For 21, 3 times 9 is 27. i times i is i squared. You need to know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So this is 27 times negative 1, which is negative 27. Uh, for 22, we have negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Negative 20 times 7 is negative 140. Negative 140 times 2 is negative 280. And 280 times 3, 740. So it's negative 740 i times i is i squared, i cubed, i to the fourth, i squared. So that's i to the sixth power, which is ne negative 740 times i to the fourth times i squared. i to the fourth power is just 1. i to the second power is negative 1. And a negative times a negative makes positive 740. For this, you need to double distribute. 6 times 2, 6 times negative 3i. That's 12 minus 18i. That's a positive 8i and a negative 12i squared. Don't forget that i times i is i squared, ladies and gentlemen. So when you do that, whenever you see i squared, it basically just means change the sign in front. So i squared makes that positive. 12 plus 12 is 24. Negative 18 plus 8 is negative 10i. 24, uh, again, double distribute. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times negative i is negative 2i. Negative 3i times 5 is negative 15i. Negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3i squared. Again, i squared means change the sign. 10 minus 3 is 7. Negative 2 minus 15 is negative 17i. 
For this, there's a squared. Don't fall victim to the trap. Write it twice. Do the extra work. 7 plus 2i, 7 plus 2i. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 2i is plus 14i. That's 14i. And that is a positive 4i squared. But since it's i squared, that means make it negative. 49 minus 4 is 45. 14 plus 14 is 28i. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times negative 2i is negative 14i. That's positive 14i. And that's a negative 4i squared. i squared means change the sign. 49 plus 4 is 53. Negative 14i plus 14i, those cross out. Your answer is just 53. Sorry I'm going through this fast. I got to go see grandma. And uh, yeah, um, you guys can always rewind it and slow it down. Uh, 27, um, so collect the graph that has the correct expressions. So uh, x squared, that's a positive x squared, which means they all have to be upward facing parabolas. So b right away goes away because that's a downward parabola. And we also need the graph of negative x plus 2. So negative x means we need a negative slope. That's a positive line for A, so cross out A. Uh, that's a zero slope. It's not C. must be D. Correct solutions. I need to find the X values where they cross. They do not cross, so there are no solutions. For 29, they cross in two places. They cross right here. That's 0, comma, negative 2. And they cross right here at this point which to me looks like it's 5 comma 3. Okay, So I'm asking for the x values, which are those guys, 0 and 5. 30. Graph the parabola written in standard form and determine the key features. So there's two separate ways we could do this. Um, I'm actually only going to do it one way, because I'm running out of time, I really have to go help grandma with something. So um, we need to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. That is given by x is equal to negative b over 2a. So negative times negative 12 divided by 2 times 2. That's positive 12 divided by 4, which is 3. That's the x value of my vertex and also my axis of symmetry. x equals 3. Um, to do my vertex, I need to plug that number back in. So this is 2 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 10. And that all comes out to negative 8. So your vertex is at positive 3, negative 8. To find the x-intercepts, you need to solve this problem. So we need 0 is equal to, I'm going to factor 2 out in front because I'm running out of steps. 2 divided by 2, that's x squared. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. 10 divided by 2 is a positive 5. And that 0 equals 2. I can guess and check this. The front has to be x. The back two need to multiply to be a positive 5, but add to a negative 6. So that's a negative 5 and a negative 1. So I get 0 is equal to x minus 5. 0 is equal to x minus 1. Add 5 to both sides to get 5 equals x. Add 1 to both sides to get 1 is equal to x. Our x-intercepts are 5 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. So to sketch it, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are my intercepts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 3, negative 8 is my vertex. 
connect them all to make your graph. Uh, graph the following. So again, we're going to do negative b over 2a. So that's going to be a negative 6 over 2 times 3. Negative 6 divided by 6 is negative 1. So that's my axis of symmetry. x equals negative 1. To find the vertex value, I need to plug it in. 3 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 minus 9. And that all comes out to negative 12. So our vertex is negative 1, negative 12. To find the x-intercepts, 0 is equal to, they all have a GCF, so I factor out a 3. There's x squared plus 2x minus 3. And that can factor to be an x in the front for both of them. Two numbers that multiply to negative 3 but add to positive 2 are a positive 3 and negative 1. So 0 is equal to x plus 3. 0 is equal to x minus 1. Subtract 3 from both sides to get negative 3 equals x. Add 1 to both sides to get 1 equals x. So our x-intercepts are negative 3 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. So there's our intercepts, whoops, uh, negative 3 comma 0, 1 comma 0, negative 1 comma, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Connect the key points to make a decent sketch of the graph. Sorry you guys didn't see that. Uh, given a quadratic function, determine the equivalent in vertex form. Man, they're really making you do number 33. OK. So for 32, um, I'm going to start off with the first two guys. This is going to be an x squared minus 12x plus blah minus blah plus 10. And I need to cut this number in half and square it. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. So those are both 36s. The front 3 will factor to an x minus 6 squared. Again, I know it's minus 6 because of that number right there. And negative 36 plus 10 is negative 26. And that is our function in vertex form. For 33, the first thing I need to do is factor an 8 out of the first couple. So f of x is equal to 8, parentheses, x squared, plus 2x, plus blank, minus blank, minus 22. And we need to fill in that blank spot. So our b value is in the parentheses. 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. 1 squared is equal to 1. So those are both filled with blanks. That's a 1. However, this number on the outside is not 1. It's actually 8 times 1 because we need to distribute that 8 back in. So that's 8. So this is 8. This will factor to be an x plus 1 squared. Again, taken from that number right there. And negative 8 minus 22 is negative 30. So f of x is equal to that function right now. Okay, I'm going to finish it up. Consider this equation. Create a value for k that gives no real solutions. So if that was positive, that means it'd be negative over here. So basically pick any positive value. I'm going to pick 1 and 2. To give me two real solutions, I could pick any negative value. Negative 1, negative 2. If I wanted just one solution, I would just have k be 0. So consider this equation. Create a value of k that gives, so this one's a little backwards. Let's pretend for a second this was a positive 2.
the rule would be subtract 2 from both sides. So negative 2 times x plus 4 squared is equal to negative 2. And then you must make sure you divide. A lot of you guys root before you divide. Knock it off. You're making me cry. Negative 2 divided by negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive 1. And when you root both sides, you actually end up with two positive numbers. So it's actually backwards this time. If you make it negative in the beginning, you would end up with no real solutions. And if you make it positive in the beginning, you end up with real solutions. Okay, um, how long does it take to reach its maximum height? It says the word maximum. So you better know that it's vertex. Maximum happens at negative b over 2a. So that's negative 160 over 2 times negative 16, which is negative 160 over 32, which comes out to negative 32, which is 5 seconds. When it says, what is the maximum height? You need to plug that number back in. Negative 16 times 5 squared plus 160 times 5 plus 10. That comes out to, ooh, that's a doozy. Uh, I believe it's 410 feet. Check it with your calculator. Um, yeah, that's negative 400 plus 800 plus 10. Yeah, I'm right. Of course I'm right. I'm awesome. 37, Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Oh, OK. Um, they usually make these really dumb uh, puns. I don't know about that one. All right. Um, oh, no, that was actually a real person. My bad. I thought they were making puns. That's hilarious. Um, maybe it was. I don't know. Length of 496. Blah, here are the functions. Whose ball reaches a greater vertical height? So we need to do vertex. So for a judge, negative 160 over 2 times negative 16. That came out to a positive 5. We know that from the last problem. And when we plug it back in, to the last problem, we get negative 16 times 5 squared plus 160 times 5 plus 4. And that's going to come out to negative 400 plus 800 plus 4, which is 404 feet. That's judges maximum height, 404. We got to plug it into the other one and see Harper was negative 128 divided by 2 times negative 16. And I believe that comes out to a positive 4. So negative 16, whoops, negative 16 times 4 squared plus 128 times 4 plus 4. That comes out to, my goodness, 256, 512. So 512, uh, that's negative 256 plus 4. And that comes out to 260 feet. So Judge had the most height. So it says, if the ball was able to travel until it hit the ground, how long would Judge's ball be in the air? Now, if it takes five seconds to get to the maximum height, usually takes five seconds to hit the ground. However, let's check just to be sure. Okay. For Judge, we have 0 is equal to negative 16 times... I'm going to factor the negative 16 out right away to make this a t squared. 160 divided by negative 16 is negative 10. 
t and I can't do that. Wait, yes I can. I can do that. Plus 4. Okay, so I just factored it out of the first two. No, I can't do that. Definitely cannot do that. Um, I Let's see, what else can I do? Can't factor them all out. I can factor out a 4. If I factor out a 4, that would give me a negative 4. So that gives me 4t squared plus 40t plus 1. And if I factor this, two things that multiply to be, I'm going to do it over here actually, so I have room to check. You should always check. Um, two things that multiply to be 4t squared are 2t and 2t. Two things that multiply to be 1 are 1 and 1. Yeah, doesn't look like it's going to factor. Well, shoot, man. We can't do that. It's good that you guys are seeing me struggle right now. I'm not really struggling. Just flexing my muscle on you guys right now. So let's try that again. Judge's ball, we want to figure out when it hits the ground. 0 is equal to negative 16 times t squared minus 10t plus blank minus blank plus 4. So we cut the b value in half, square it, that's negative 5 squared is 25. So in the blanks must go a 25, but out here is negative 16 times 25, which would be a negative 400. So this is negative 16 times t minus 5 squared is equal to 400 plus 4 is 404. Whoops, I don't know why that's an equals. That should be a plus. Then we need to solve it. We subtract 404 from both sides. So negative 404 is equal to negative 16 times t minus 5 squared. We divide both sides by negative 16. And that comes out to a positive 2. That comes out to a positive something. Did I ever say round? Didn't say round. Um, so let's just put it in the calculator and see what we get. It doesn't go perfectly. Four oh four divided by sixteen comes out to twenty five point two five, and that's equal to a t minus five squared. Then we're going to divide or root both sides. So the square root of twenty five point two five comes out to five point oh. 2 equals a t minus 5 and negative 5.02 is equal to t minus 5. If you add 5 to both sides, we get 10.02. Add 5 to both sides and we get 0.02. So 10.02 is actually how long it should be in the air. The reason why it's not a perfect 10 is because when he hits the ball, 
The ball is not on the ground. The ball is at about chest height. If you know anything about baseball, that's why it doesn't work like that. Okay? So that was Judge. Let's do Harper and hope that it's not nearly as bad. Actually, for Harper, I'm just going to go straight into the quadratic formula. So it's going to be a x equals negative 128 plus or minus the square root of 128 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 4 all over 2 times negative 16. So that's negative 128 plus or minus the square root 128 squared is 16,384. Negative 4 times 4 is 16. Negative 16. Negative 16 times negative 16 is 256. All over 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. That is the square root of plus 256. So that's negative 128 plus the square root of 16,640 all divided by negative 32. And negative 128 minus the square root of 16,640 all over negative 32. And at this point, I'm plugging it into a calculator. Square root of 16,640. That's negative 128 plus 128.99 divided by negative 32. That's going to be a very small number. This is negative 128 minus 128.99 all over negative 32. Plug that into a calculator. Uh, and that comes out to 8.03 seconds. So it took Judge roughly 10 seconds, 10.02 seconds for it to hit the ground. And it took Harper's 8.03 seconds to hit the ground. That does it. I'm out. Grandma's calling. You guys have a great night. Good luck.